G'day guys, welcome back to the workshop. Today, we're going to discuss blacksmithing. What is it? I was prompted to this uh, subject by reading the comments on a few YouTube videos of some channels that I follow. And it's a common thread I find among YouTube comments, Instagram comments, you know, you name it the social media of your choice, there is normally, under a blacksmith's video, going to be someone who claims you aren't forging, or you're not a blacksmith, when it comes to mechanical means of forging. Which is one of the reasons I'm standing next to my forging press. <laughs> but um, I wanted to discuss and investigate the claim of that's not blacksmithing and why I think it's wrong. Blacksmithing takes many forms, but um, before we get into the actual types of blacksmithing, I'd like to discuss a little bit of the etymology of the word blacksmith. Now, the, it's commonly believed and commonly held that the term blacksmith was split in from two words. First, black being the color that steel turns when oxidized in a fire, and the second word smith being derived somewhat from the Germanic schmiede which means to hit. Now, that's not been, you know, actually verified, but that seems to be the most common uh, etymology of the phrase blacksmith. So, from that we can take man who works with iron with a hammer, or man who works with iron by hitting it. Now, that isn't necessarily the dictionary definition of blacksmith, however. The Oxford and Cambridge dictionaries define the term blacksmith as being a person who works or repairs items of iron, specifically horseshoes. Now that being the dictionary definition does not necessarily mean that, that is what we as blacksmiths do. The more common form of blacksmithing, or the more common definition used colloquially, is someone who works with steel at heat, or iron at heat. Uh, so that is to use steel at its plastic form, when heated, to deform it to make something else. Now, in that term, do we want to discuss whether or not certain types of people are blacksmiths? And this is when it comes down to personal opinion and the opinions of many people online, most of whom I believe are not blacksmiths themselves. More often than not, I see this kind of comment on channels of blacksmiths who utilize mechanical means of forging, such as power hammers or forging presses, sometimes even comments on channels simply because they use something like a gas forge. Now I believe this is slightly misguided in what people idealize as a blacksmith. And I think that in order to discuss what a blacksmith is, we need to discuss what a blacksmith has been historically. So, starting with the early Iron Age, mankind developed the ability to work iron from ore to make tools. Now, in the very early stages, they would have been making bog iron in very, very low quality smelters, as they learned to work this new material after working bronze for many, many decades, centuries, millennia, whatever you, what have you. But the end of it all resulted in a new age for mankind of making tools of iron. And that all ended up developing into what we know as the modern blacksmith. Modern blacksmith being a relative term, given that the majority of us, when we imagine a blacksmith, are normally seeing something mid to late 19th century, perhaps during the time of the Wild West, or even early as, you know, times of the 16th century, forging rapiers and swords for kings. But that is a very long way from where we began. And during that time, technological advances helped smiths become better, more efficient, and overall just more effective at being blacksmiths. From tools of bronze to tools of iron, we took massive scientific advances to further our existence and to further our ability to procreate and to spread across the world. Now, that being said, everything in itself remained the same. The items remained the same. The, you know, the piece that we were working with remained the same, the metal. 
that we were working with remain the same. Iron in its pure form almost doesn't exist. It's incredibly hard to synthesize iron with no alloying content whatsoever. Most of what we come into contact with, even wrought iron, is actually steel, just in varying grades of carbon content. Now, that notwithstanding, the form of smithing that we see today is practically no different to the form of smithing that you would see in the early Iron Age, through the Viking era, through the early Middle Ages, late Middle Ages, Renaissance, into the Age of Sail, and beyond. In the end, all it is, is man working hot metal into shapes that are useful for continued advance. That being said, I think a lot of people have in mind a certain image of a blacksmith, a dark shop, a smoky charcoal fire, and a hammer in his hand, the pounding of the anvil, this romantic atmosphere of the forge. And I think this is where we come to our main problem. That mental image, whatever it might be, whether it be 18th century Britain making cutlasses for his majesty's navy, or whether it be early Viking era making swords for the Jarl, it all comes down to a mental image made not of experience, but of interpretation from modern media. Unfortunately, the inescapable truth is that we will never be able to meet those craftsmen. We will never be able to lay eyes on their work as it is formed on the anvil. All we have is interpretation. And in so doing, we allow everything open to our own perspectives. So let's break down the act of smithing. Smithing only includes heating steel to a point where it is malleable and then utilizing some form of force to manipulate that malleable material. When it comes to modern smithing uh, in this current day and age, there is very little going on that is of a craftsman application. When we think of industrial blacksmiths these days, most of us will think to people making wrought iron gates, rails, uh, even perhaps bridges, that kind of thing. But in practical applications, most blacksmiths have been replaced by people like boilermakers, welders, uh, and even machinists and mach metal benders. Machinery has allowed us to move past the necessity for heating steel in some applications. Take, for instance, the sheet walls of this uh, shed that I now sit in. These sheets would have been hot at some point when poured from the factory, but were cold rolled and pressed into the shape they now uh, inhabit. That being said, the people who worked on these sheets of steel, when they were hot, were technically blacksmithing. Those people who flip the switch at a drop forging facility that allows giant mechanical presses to come together and shape a hot billet of iron into an axe or a hammer or a knife or whatever you want to imagine are technically the modern equivalent of an industrial blacksmith. The modern blacksmith or bladesmith is limited to being an artisan. There are a few of us who still have industrial contracts to make things like U-brackets or, you know, bench seats, stuff like that. But the majority of us are artists. Whether we make practical things like hammers, tongs, knives, swords, whatever you can imagine that can be used practically, it is still an art form. It is not an essential craft. And that's not to negate the value of blacksmithing as a hobby, as a profession. I am a professional bladesmith, but I am under no illusion that I am essential to the world's existence. And being, that being said, I don't believe that that in any way makes me less than those smiths of millennia ago. While I spend a lot of my time researching medieval smiths and medieval, you know, 
craftsmen of the days gone by and try my best to reflect their ingenuity in my work. I believe that if they were to come from where they are now to my shop, they would immediately want to take everything I own back to their own shop. I don't believe that by using mechanical tools like this belt grinder, which is simply the more up-to-date version of a large stone wheel run on a water mill, makes me any less a smith. And this is, I think, the fundamental problem with those comments we see on our YouTube channels regarding whether or not you're a blacksmith. Blacksmithing is an incredible art form. And it is no joke when I say that it is one of the fundamental crafts that brought humanity out of the Stone Age and into the Industrial Era and then into space. Everything in modern civilization came from the face of an anvil and the hand that held the hammer. That being said, to call someone a a blacksmith or not a blacksmith based solely on their use of mechanical tools I think is complete folly. 1300s Swedish blacksmiths invented water-powered power hammers. Going before that we have sort of historical evidence, mostly documentary evidence rather than physical, of water-powered forging tools. And let's not forget the utilization of slaves and of apprentices to swing very, very large sledgehammers for us. A lot of, I think, the mystique that surrounds blacksmithing can be accredited to things like documentaries surrounding the forging of Japanese katanas or the forging of the Ulfbert sword from the Secrets of the Viking Sword documentary. And while understanding history and while appreciating the amount of work that went into a simple piece of art, like an Ulfbert or like a Japanese katana, I think it's really important to understand that those single individual pieces can be made in a modern setting just as efficiently by a single smith with modern power tools. And the katana is a perfect example when most modern Japanese blacksmiths who make katana to, today, even in Japan, traditionally made, use power hammers. Because it's very, very hard to find young men who are willing to sacrifice a third of their year for virtually no pay to only learn a craft which is, for all intents and purposes, dead. And even to become a swordsmith and then make barely what most of us would qualify as a living uh, is yeah, it's pretty difficult. So those who do it, myself included, do it out of passion, not out of necessity. So this video has taken a little bit of a leap down the philosophical road, but I think it's really important to understand that while these comments are trying to reflect upon what their understanding of blacksmithing is, I don't think it reflects what blacksmithing actually is. At the end of the day, according to my own personal perspective, which could be flawed, and I welcome you to correct me in the you know, comments down below, I am always willing to be wrong, but to my personal perspective, if you are heating steel and moving it when heated, if you are using the plastic state of steel to form it, you are a blacksmith. Now, to what area of blacksmithing you are will depend on what you're making. I recently made a set of brackets. That doesn't necessarily make me a blacksmith. I call myself a bladesmith because that is my specialty. My tools are set up for it. My intent is to be a bladesmith. Does that mean I can do blacksmithing? Can't do blacksmithing at all? Of course it doesn't. I can make blacksmith stuff. I make hammers, I make axes, I make brackets. <laughs> I make bed frame pieces, I make door handles, I make hinges, but I am not a blacksmith because that is not my desired profession. Those that call themselves blacksmiths aren't incapable of making blades, it's just that their focus is more upon the architectural or the industrial side or the artistic side of blacksmithing. But in the end, we are all blacksmiths. We all work with steel that turns black when heated and we all hit it, whether mechanically like with a forge press, 
or with a hammer. None of us are any less a blacksmith than any other, except for the methods we use, and that doesn't make us less or more. So, all of this being said, my love for blacksmithing will never abate. Because there are things in blacksmithing that we can do that no other craftsperson can do. We are the kings of the crafts people. Without blacksmiths, all other crafts fail. The hammer that drives the nail of the carpenter was made by the blacksmith. The nail that it drives was made by the blacksmith. The scissors that shear the fabric that are used by tailors were made by blacksmiths. The axes of the loggers were made by blacksmiths. At the end of the day, blacksmiths made every tool that the modern craftsman now uses. And I like to use an analogy such as you can't grind a 12 inch blade from a 2 inch ball bearing. But you can certainly hammer one out of it. <laughs> that being said, all other crafts are just as valuable as blacksmithing. And by no means are we better than any other craftsperson. But that is to say that anyone who practices this incredibly fascinating and incredibly exciting craft can call themselves a blacksmith whenever they like and don't rely on YouTube commenters and trolls to judge whether or not you are without a doubt a blacksmith. There are those who are in the community who hold more of a blacksmith say than others according to their own opinion based purely upon the fact that they existed in a time when blacksmiths did have apprenticeships, when blacksmiths did have a necessity within the community. And there are those of us who work in an industrial setting as somewhat of a blacksmith. Boilermakers heat steel to bend it. Uh, farriers heat steel to burn shoes on. Sometimes they forge their own shoes. There are people within manufacturing areas all over the world that still forge things. Grunge Force Brooks is a perfect example. Uh, using 110 ton cyclical presses to forge axes. It doesn't make them any less blacksmiths. They are all blacksmiths, all of them, for moving steel while it's hot. All I want to say is that if you want to be a part of this craft and you're worried about whether or not you can call yourself a blacksmith, I am giving you permission right now that if you heat steel up in no matter what you use, induction forge, gas forge, charcoal forge, coal forge, you name it, and then you move that steel, whether by power hammer, press, hammer, tongs, whatever it may be, you are a blacksmith. Call yourself one if you want to, and if you don't want to, don't. But at the end of the day, I don't believe that anyone else's judgment should matter. And for those of us who are part of the community, I don't think we care. <laughs> We can take otherwise unusable junk and turn it into useful items. And that is valuable. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry I got a little bit rambly there, but uh, I felt that it needed to be said, and it's been something that I've wanted to make a video on for a while. I will be getting back to making making videos very, very soon. I actually have a couple in the works right now, but I've kind of been flitting between jobs as it stands. So most of my videos at the moment are going to be more idea-based <laughs> until I can get those finished. While I've got you, I'd really like to say thank you to my patrons, which I'm going to throw up right here. They keep this channel going. And honestly, I could not do this without their continued support. If you want to become a member of my Patreon, you can see the link down below, click on it, and join for as little as a dollar a month. It really helps support the channel and it really helps me keep bringing out content like this. If you want to purchase merch from me, uh, I don't currently have it in polo shirts, but you can buy STB merch from my Red Bull account, which is down below. I also have an Etsy store that you can check out, again, in the description down below. If you liked this video, and if you like my making videos, which there are many on this channel, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell notification icon to be notified of when I upload a new video. YouTube doesn't let you know otherwise. And hit that like button while you're there. 
And I'd like to invite you one final time to please give your opinion on what you think blacksmithing is down in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear what people think about our craft, whether you've been in it for a long time, whether you've never tried blacksmithing before, or whether you're just getting started. I really, really like hearing from you guys. With that being said, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.